Hey guys, I'm Holly from The Run Experience, and today we are talking about how to start running when you're overweight. Now, I released a video on this a couple of weeks ago, and I talked about all of the ways you can start to get in shape to run, the most manageable ways to do that. Today, I'm gonna get more detailed and talk about a sample training week, specifically for beginners, but of course, anyone can tackle this and modify as they want. We're gonna go Monday through Sunday. I'm gonna tell you what to do each and every day, including when to rest. Let's jump in. So it's one thing to understand in theory everything you need to do to start running and lose that weight. It's a very different thing to implement your training and really make it happen. And so that is why I am spelling out that entire week of training for you. We're gonna take it day by day. I tell you how long each thing takes, why it's important, and how you can modify it. So without further ado, let's get into Monday. So day one, we are starting with a very simple 30 minute walk. Now I want you to take this walk at a slightly faster pace than what would be conversational with a friend or just a leisurely walk on the weekend. We wanna turn this up a notch to more of that power walk idea. So just heart rate's a little bit up, but nothing crazy. Every 10 minutes on this walk, I'm gonna have you stop for 10 to 20 air squats. Now, if you're someone new to this movement, you've never really done any squats before, stay on that lower end of the rep. But if you've done this a lot and you're pretty comfortable with that movement, I want you to cha uh, challenge yourself to do 20 every 10 minutes. So, for those of you who are not familiar, let's go over that air squat. I'm gonna start with just about hips width distance apart here with my feet, toes are pointed straight ahead. I'm gonna start by just bringing my belly button into the spine just a little bit to find some engagement and then squeezing the glute as much as I can as if I have a piece of paper back there and I'm gonna hold on to it. So starting nice and tall, all I'm gonna do is reach my hips back as if I'm sitting in a chair and just press those knees out wide. I'm just gonna go a couple inches on this first one and then I'm gonna push up the same way I went down. So I'm gonna go back down again and then come back up. I'm gonna try to keep that chest tall so I'm not falling over when I go, but I'm still reaching and I can kind of lay over my thighs a little bit like that. And why I'm doing that is so that the knee stays right over the ankle and you're not pushing it past over the toe. When we do that, we end up loading the joints and we end up working the quads a lot harder. This is actually supposed to be more of an exercise for the hip extension, working those hamstrings and glutes. And if we get those knees in jeopardy here and we push them over, that's gonna add up very quick. So I want you guys, I'll show you from the front, to just practice a couple of these, pressing those knees out, sitting the hips back and the chest up. Again, never losing that belly here, it's always on. Remember to take some nice deep breaths on these because you'll be stopping mid-walk for that, just like this. As far as the depth, if you're new to this, just try getting a little bit lower each time and then coming back up. If you're getting more experienced with it, I challenge you to go as deep as you possibly can without turning off tension and standing all the way up. If you ever get more advanced with this and hold a weight or anything, you're gonna wanna know how to hit full depth on that squat. So again, 30 minute walk, every 10 minutes stop for 10 to 20 air squats. Now day one is not over. This last little section is just as important as that walk. I'm gonna give you a little stretch routine, just five minutes to spend after you finish that workout to make sure you're taking care of those muscles. So what we're gonna do is just a very simple full body movement. I'll give you three versions of this so that if you're more flexible or less flexible, you have one of these to target. All you're gonna do is start, I'm gonna use this bench here as the highest point to start. I'm gonna put my hands right here walk my feet back until I'm kind of at this elevated plank position so my body's straight I'm gonna just first think about dropping those heels as low as I can to the ground to try to get into those calves and I'm just gonna reach those ch the chest up here after that I'm gonna reach my hips back keeping the legs as straight as possible but if you don't have very much hamstring flexibility feel free to bend them a little bit you're gonna reach the head through and just find a stretch here you should feel the backs of the legs Hamstrings really starting to get opened up here. Again, just relax those heels down to the ground. I'm gonna to try to push my head through to get those shoulders and chest open and then work through. So I come back to that first position here, drop those heels and back. And then if I can straighten those legs, I will. Next version of this, I'm gonna walk those hands down. You can get a little bit more range of motion through the shoulders for sure. We can push that head through. Again, bending these knees if you need to, but just finding a stretch through the back of the leg and then come through. Another element you can add here is a little pedal through the feet. So even when I'm back here, I can kind of work through at any angle really, just to get those calves a little bit more loosened and lengthened back there. 
Once this feels good, the last version here is bringing this to a full downward dog. Only doing this when you feel comfortable, but you're just gonna have those hands on the ground, push through as much as you can. Again, bend those knees if you need to. You can rock forward a little bit in between, kind of make a dynamic stretch out of this which just means you're moving through it versus staying in one spot. And then again, I can pedal out those calves, just walking up to that squat and standing up to safely come out. I want you to spend five minutes taking care of yourself. If that means spending about three of those minutes in this position, coming up for air in between, that's fine. Just spend a little bit of time here. We wanna build those habits because every workout is going to finish with some self-care and mobility at the end. Day two, we are getting into our first strength workout. This is gonna be a dedicated 15 minute strength workout. I mentioned in the other video that these are important to include. So let's talk about what a great starter strength workout would be for you. This is gonna be four movements total. I'm gonna to give you the rep scheme I think would be reasonable, but of course modify that if you need to. We're gonna start with just some simple shoulder taps. So I'm gonna use this bench here again, an elevated surface. Again, you know, a foot or two off the ground should be plenty put my hands right under my shoulders and walk the feet back. So for this first version, I'm gonna show you actually with a hip width stance with my feet, a little bit harder would be legs together because those hips are gonna to wanna to twist during this and the, the closer they are together, the harder it is to stabilize. But for now, let's keep them separated. All I want you guys to do is tap one hand to the opposite shoulder and alternate like this just for 20 reps total. Each one counts as one. The key to this movement is not letting the hips swing. And so when I tap this hand to this shoulder, I'm thinking about how can I keep my core nice and stable without anything moving to provide the surface to take the hand off. If I start going like this, one, it feels a lot easier because it's doing less work for you. So just challenge yourself to keep those hips stable, 20 reps there. You're now gonna go into a box squat. Just standing again, just like we did on those air squats on day one, you're gonna find that first stance. But today we're gonna to use a target to actually have something to land on. This will improve your position and also teach you how to get a little bit lower in that squat. So I'm gonna reach those hips back here, keeping that chest up. Find that bench. If you need a little momentum, this is a great place to kind of rock back just an inch or two and then roll yourself back up. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, I want you to just stay st uh, stable here and don't move, and then rather use the weight into the heels to stand up. So I reach back, stop myself for a second, and then again, shoot those hips back, pressing those knees out wide. 10 of those. After this, make sure you squeeze the butt at the top, of course. After those, we're going into a simple step up. 10 alternating. All I'm gonna do, you're gonna to start to notice a pattern here is I'm gonna reach the hips back. And again, we're just loading the backs of the legs, making sure those knees are totally vertical over the lower leg here. Chest is staying up. And I'm just gonna step up here all the way tall. And then on that same leg, step down. Now I'm gonna alternate. So go up to that left side, reach those hips back, push the hips to the top. Again, and I talked about it on day one, but that hip extension and actually finding that full push forward at the top is gonna to teach you how to do that when you run. That's gonna be a huge part in preventing injuries. We'll get into that down the road into more of your more advanced training, but for now you're just doing 10 of those step ups. The final thing you're gonna do is a little crab walk, alternating touch again. This is gonna work the triceps and a little bit of that hoop stability as well. So I'm just gonna find that straight position here on the bench and with as little movement as possible, so not rocking, I'm gonna to try to just find full extension through the arm that's supporting me. So that's what we're really focused on. It's not the one coming off, but the one supporting you. A little more challenging version of this would be to take it down to the ground and you can get a little extra glute work in here. So you can actually keep the hips up, really squeeze here and do the same thing again, trying not to rock too much. You're gonna find 20 reps of that. I want you guys to do four rounds of this and I want you to rest three minutes between each round. Fully recover through this, hit every round. You've got 20 reps on the first one, 10 of the two in the middle and 20 at the end. Take your full rest and go at a nice easy pace where you're working correctly the entire time. After you finish that strength workout, all I want you to do is go for a short little walk and get some dynamic stretching in while you're walking. So you can even stop every few minutes or you can just kind of do it while you're moving. I'm gonna suggest some big arm circles. This is a nice way to just kind of open up the chest. You just did a lot of 
you know, muscle contracting and probably working some muscles that haven't done stuff in a while. So you want to make sure that you're at least giving some blood flow to those after the fact, you know, and just getting everything a little bit loosened up. This does make a difference. I even recommend um, in the shower, just, you know, afterwards you can get hot water on your muscles and actually just being able to stretch and even just light movement through there, just kind of getting things working so you're not just stopping stagnant after your workout. Another thing you can do on that little walk is just a couple knee, knee hugs. I can actually do this in place or I can actually do it as I'm walking, but arm circles and knee hugs, again, let that hot water help you. That is it for day two. All right, day three is your first rest day. This is gonna be a chance for your body to recover, let those muscles, which have been working so hard for you the last two days, give them a little chance to repair. Two things I want you to focus on on this rest day. This doesn't mean you just give up on your dream of training and come back to it tomorrow. You're gonna to still have it in your mind, but this is gonna be more of a recovery day. I want you to focus on really getting that water intake dialed in. Get it kind of ahead of your hydration today so that you're really set up for the rest of the week and also making sure your body is replenished from the two days before. The other thing I want you to focus on is some mobility work. So just getting into those joints and muscles just spend 10 minutes today working on two to three different areas. We have a great playlist here on the channel, actually a couple of them, but we do have one specific to preventing running injury and you'll find all of our favorite, favorite routines there all specified by different body parts and things you might need. So pick a couple areas that either are nagging you or have nagged you in the past and focus on those just 10 minutes today and I'll see you for day four. Here we go, day four. We are gonna get into a hill repeat workout. Don't stress out, we're gonna to stick to walking, but I am adding some incline today to help us get our heart rate up a little bit higher than it was on that walk or maybe on that strength workout, but I'm gonna give you those recoveries in between so you're always getting a chance to catch your breath. This is just gonna get you comfortable feeling uncomfortable is the best way to describe it. You're gonna be doing one minute efforts up the hill, just a nice power walk, power hike up a hill, I would find something in that five to 8% grade. Um, if you're on a treadmill, you can literally just set the incline to 5.0 up to 8.0, somewhere in there. Out, if you're outside somewhere, just find a long but not too steep hill that you can climb up for a minute. You're gonna do one minute at a time, then you're gonna take two minutes recovery or a little bit longer if you need to just walk back down that hill, catch your breath. If you're on the treadmill, just flatten it out for those two minutes. So let me show you what I mean by that power hike. I am just going to focus here on walking a little faster than I would on flat, keeping my hips forward, which has been the theme here. You know, we talked about in those air squats and stuff. It's a good practice to just encourage yourself to keep your glutes working and hamstrings firing the whole time you're moving. So all you're gonna do is with your arms helping you, you're just gonna power hike up this hill like this. You can see as much as you wanna to start to lean over because it's a hill and it's tough to get up, that's not gonna help you. It's actually gonna put your spine a little bit in jeopardy, your core turns off and everything dumps out. I wanna keep always pushing my hips forward. Even if I'm leaned, the right muscles are working. At least I can be sure of that. I'm gonna power up there, use those arms. Big inhales through the nose, fill up that belly with the breath. Exhale nice and deep. One minute up, two minutes recovery. You're going 10 times. Of course, adjust this if that feels like it's too much or increase if it feels like it's not enough. We will finish today up with just a very light stretching routine. For this one, I'm just gonna simply have you guys stand and just kind of pound out the quads because you're gonna be worked up. Those legs are gonna have taken a beating on this one today. Just with two fists, you're gonna do the left leg first. I'm just gonna have you guys kind of beat out the front, almost like a tenderizer, like if you're making chicken. And you're just gonna kind of pound out the front of the quad here. After a little bit of time on the front, you're gonna work out to the side, get that IT band, and then I might even take this into the inner thigh here. If the fists aren't enough, you can of course use a foam roller and something like that, but I like something that's just easy right after you finish, just don't even think about it. Just get that lactic acid kind of spread out here and just kind of avoid the soreness. You'll be a little bit sore tomorrow, but you just, you want to avoid some of, some of it by just doing something good for your body right after. After that, just shake those legs out. That is it for day four. Day five, we've got a circuit workout. This is similar to what we did on day two in that we are building strength through it, but it's in a little bit more of a cardio style way. So I'm gonna have that heart rate up, but you're gonna be learning how to pace yourself through a variety of movements, including a little jogging, versus just slowly working through some strength building movements. This will make more sense in a second. 
I want you guys to start getting comfortable knowing what your scale of effort is. This is gonna be a great way to test that out. Kind of finding that pace that you can control and maintain through multiple rounds so that you're not going out super hard and dying by the end and not going out so easy that you're not actually getting a challenge from this. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be doing. You are going to be doing four rounds of this, uh, this circuit. You're gonna start with a very simple 30 second jog, 30 second walk. So if that is too easy, you can do the full jog for the minute, but otherwise start with 30 and 30. When you get back from that jog walk, all you're gonna do is go into a 30 second plank. I'm gonna use this bench as a more modified version, but of course you can take this down to the ground if you're ready for it. Hands go right under the shoulders, walk those feet back. I do want your legs all the way together on this one, squeeze the butt and then keep those shoulders pressed down. So I'm in one flat line, belly buttons pulled into the spine, and I'm just focusing on deep, slow breathing. Your heart rate will be up from that jog, but you're gonna try to slow it down here. The slower you breathe, the faster the time goes by, honestly, on this. And again, if you want that challenge, let's walk it down for that full plank hold. Straight arms here, elbows are twisted forward. You're screwing that hand into the ground, creating that tension through the shoulder go into that plank. Next, you're going into 20 oblique twists in a standing position. This is just gonna to start to activate these obliques here, get you using them in other movements. Hands are gonna be right behind my head, and I'm gonna tuck one knee in. I'm just gonna find this little march in place. The more I twist the knee across and rotate the torso against it, I'm finding more intense position there. Just 20 alternating like this. Don't cave the elbows in, keep them wide. Final thing here is just 10 simple jumping jacks. I'll back up here. You guys wanna make sure the heels touch the ground each time you jump. You're not staying up on the toes. We don't wanna aggravate those calves or overwork them. That's not the point of this one. So tapping those hands at the top, just 10 of these. Again, from the side, make sure you're not arching the back, but keeping everything in one straight line, finding that breathing there too. That heart rate will get one last little spike on the end of that round. Four rounds of this total, I want you guys to rest anywhere from one to three minutes in between. I'll leave it up to you. I want you to time each round. See that you're holding that consistent pace. Challenge yourself to really keep that same timing throughout the entire workout. Let's finish this one up by just stretching out our core and deeper muscles. This is actually the psoas that work deeper below here. Those are so responsible for actually lifting our extremities up and doing so much for us when we work out that we wanna make sure we give them some love. So what I want you to do, find a surface. You can use your bed, couch, maybe just a low bench, something like I have here. And I'm just gonna put one foot up and walk this other foot back. So I'm basically in kind of a lengthened standing lunge position, if you will. And I'm just gonna push my hips forward here and what I'm gonna to try to find is just a stretch all the way up through the front of the hip and then deeper into that core. You'll actually start to feel those abdomen muscles kind of feel stretched here. And what I'm gonna to do to exaggerate this is put one arm, the same leg that's back, I'm gonna raise that arm up and then just reach kind of on this back diagonal here, just breathing through. I feel this start to go all the way through here. The more you push the hips forward, the more you'll feel that through the front here. Again, we're not aggravating this knee, we're just gonna keep it pretty vertical up front here and just breathe. Let's go 10 deep breaths with this leg back. Just like that. You'll go through those 10 breaths, stepping back, shake those legs out. You can even feel the difference, even from just a few seconds there, I can feel a difference here. I'll kick that other leg up, that other arm over, same thing there. If you not want something a little bit more exaggerated, you can take that down all the way to the ground and increase that stretch on the front. That'll be how you finish up this day. All right, guys, day six. If you started with me on a Monday, we're on to our Saturday now. This is gonna be your fun, active recovery day. I'm introducing this concept because rest days don't all necessarily need to be the same. This one, I'm gonna allow you to pick an activity of your choice. This can be anything active, outdoors, this doesn't have to be intense, it's not a workout, but it's somewhere where you're moving and you're having fun and you're just enjoying being active. So a few different options here. You can do a bike ride with a friend, you can go on a walk, you could just go out and play frisbee, you could go run out with your kids and just kind of play with them out in the park for 30 minutes, all these types of things. You could even go swimming. These different types of activities that maybe you don't do regularly, but you start to feel a little bit more confident getting into the more you start your training. So use today for fun. Just get out there, do something a little bit different so that we can hit it hard for day seven. 
So we've made it to that seventh day of the training week. This is personally my favorite day because it is really why you came to this video in the first place. You want to be able to run. And this is gonna be the pinnacle. This is the end of the week. We're gonna give ourselves a chance to just explore a little bit of jogging. And I'm gonna give you a very tangible, easy way to get started with this. It's very easy to modify and increase as you get more experience. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna run for 20 minutes, but we're gonna break this up into a run walk method. You're gonna jog for 30 seconds and walk for a minute, alternated that way through the 20 minutes. Now, as you get more comfortable with this, of course you can increase the jogging time and decrease the walking time as you see fit. This can be done in 10 second increments as the weeks go on. Just encourage yourself to address your improvement along the week so you're not just staying stagnant where you are, but you're getting better. Now I want you guys to start any workout, like I said, with a good warm up, a good dynamic routine to get yourself primed and ready to move well. I'm gonna give you a little example here. So if I were about to go out for that 20 minute jog, what I would do first is maybe just get that heart rate just a little elevated before I started. So maybe I would start with just 10 jumping jacks like this, go through about 10 there. Maybe I'll do a couple knee hugs. So I'll just pull that knee in. You've seen a lot of these movements from a couple of the other days, but we can kind of combine them how we see fit to just get ourselves warmed and ready so you're not just going out cold. After this, maybe I can get those arms and chest loosened up so that I have full arm swing ready to go for my run. Lean over here, just a little cross body movement. And of course, stand it up. Let's take some arm circles, working backwards and forward again. Get creative with this. We have so many ideas on the channel. I have even some warm-up videos I did where you follow along with me. Those are all there on those playlists in the warm-up and cool down. So create a routine for yourself, spend five minutes, go for that 20 minute jog walk, come back and then for your five minute cool down, I want you guys to use anything from the previous six days that I gave you. Pick a couple stretches, again, at least five minutes here. Bring that heart rate down, big deep breaths, and be proud of the week you just accomplished. Thanks for going through that sample week of training with me. I hope you got something out of it that you can apply to your training. If you're looking for more ways to up your game in this department, we have a brand new app and you can click the link down in the description to get it. We have interactive workouts on there, follow along mobility routines, places you can interact with the coaches and other runners, and you can even track your runs on there. So there's so much going on on that app and we want you guys to check it out. If you liked this video, give that thumbs up down below. And if you have any comments or questions for me around this topic, or maybe from the other video about how to start running when you're overweight, I am happy to answer those. And lastly, subscribe to that channel. You know that we have new videos coming out each and every week on all types of topics, and we don't want you to miss those. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.